اللهم أكثر مالي وولدي وبارك لي فيما أعطيتني الله ربي لا أشرك به شيئا اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك بسم الله والحمد لله والثناء لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he extremely encouraged that one visit the sick and he told us from the right to the Muslim upon the other Muslim is that when they are sick that you visit them and the Prophet ﷺ would frequently visit those who are sick and he وسلم, he told us in a hadith that the one who visits the sick that it will be said to him it will be said to him that you are pure and that you've attained reward and that you have attained a home in paradise by doing so. And the Prophet ﷺ also taught us that the one who visits the sick in the morning, that 70,000 angels will make him dua for him, seek forgiveness for him until the evening. And whoever visits the sick in the evening, 70,000 angels will make him dua for that individual, seek forgiveness for that individual until the morning. Great reward. And the Prophet ﷺ, he taught us certain du'as to say when we visit the sick, to make du'a for them. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, one day in the hadith Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that when some of the family members of the Prophet ﷺ would become sick, the Prophet ﷺ would wipe over their body or would place his hand on their body and then he ﷺ would say, أَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمُ رَبَّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمُ أَنْ يَشْفِيكُ he would say, أَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمُ رَبَّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمُ أَنْ يَشْفِيكَ I ask Allah, be greatest, the Lord of the greatest throne, to cure you. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say that seven times. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما that whoever says that seven times for the one who's sick, Allah will cure them as long as it's not their time to depart this world and pass away. If it's not their time, Allah will cure them. Also the Prophet ﷺ, he also taught us that when you visit the sick, that you say another dua. The Prophet ﷺ would say, Allahum rabban nas, adhib al bas, washfi anta shafi. لا شفاء إلا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر السقماء. He would say عليه الصلاة والسلام اللهم أو الله رب الناس the Lord of mankind أذهب الباس remove all harm يعني the illness وشفي and cure أنت الشاف you are the one who cures لا شفاء إلا شفاءك there's no cure except your cure شفاء a cure لا يغادر سقما that does not leave any disease behind. That's one of the du'as of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام that he would make for the for the sick. These du'as when you visit the sick, it's essential that we implement these sunnas. And it's very important that we have that etiquette with Allah تبارك وتعالى. Ibrahim عليه السلام Allah تبارك وتعالى narrates what Ibrahim عليه السلام he says. In Surah Al-Shu'ara, Allah says that Ibrahim said, الَّذِي خَلَقَنِي فَهُوَ يَهْدِينَ وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمُنِي وَيَسْقِينَ وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ وَالَّذِي يُمِيتُنِي ثُمَّ يُحِينَ وَالَّذِي أَطْمَعُ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينَ Amongst these ayat, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says Allah is the one who خلق and who created me and he's the one who grants me life and he's the one who's going to take away my life and, and so on and he's the one who feeds me and quenches my thirst and then he says وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ 
And when I become sick, فَهُوَ يَشْفِينِي Allah cures me. Look at the statement of Ibrahim a.s. Everything else, granting life, creation, taking away life, uh, all these matters, he said Allah is the one who does that. But when he came to sickness and illness, he said, I, when I become sick. Why? Because of who causes you to become sick? Allah. But because of the etiquette that Ibrahim a.s. had with Allah Azza wa he does not want to attribute that to Allah. He only attributes perfection to Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's very important in our du'as. That when we're calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal, we attribute all of perfection, all of goodness to Allah, and we attribute all faults to ourselves. I want to share with you a personal story. About two years or almost three years ago now, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. And when she was diagnosed with cancer, subhanAllah, uh, this illness, we ask Allah wa ta'ala to cure all those who are sick and to protect others from this illness. But when she was diagnosed with cancer, she subhanAllah was extremely optimistic. We were all يعني, in shock or in grief or in sadness. But she was the one who received the news. She never ever complained once. And then she had to go through chemo and she was going through treatment and so on for a year. And after a year, after they'd done all the treatments and they operated on her, they said that she was in a clip and she was fine now. And then a few months later, after we thought, Alhamdulillah, this period of time, this test has passed and so on. A few months later, I remember my mother, she called me. I was away, she called me and she told me, hey, Yahya, the doctors, they told me that the cancer has come back and now it's come back in somewhere more dangerous. So it was a huge shock. And then the whole time she was saying to me that this is the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah wa Ta'ala, He wants to see how patient we really are and how we are going to react to this calamity. She was the one who was consoling me, not the other way around, subhanAllah. And because I was abroad as well, it made it even more difficult that I wasn't there at that moment when she told me that news. But subhanAllah, Allah Taala inspired me because when she told me this news, I was in Mecca. I was in the Haram. Allah Taala inspired me to use the dua of Ayyub salam in my sujood for my mother. And I said, Rabbi, Masa. أمي الضر وأنت أرحم الراحمين فاكشف الضر عنها برحمتك أرحم الراحمين I said Rabbi my Lord my mother has been afflicted with harm and you are the most merciful of those who have mercy so remove the harm from her with your mercy and every single time I got sujood I do not remember a single salah I prayed except that I made a dua like it and other duas that are similar to it in my sujood. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, a few months ago, she was given the clear, Alhamdulillah, the cancer is like it's not there anymore. Bifaddillah tawarak wa ta'ala. That's the power of dua. The cancer that she had was in her lungs, in a serious place. But when it comes to dua, there's nothing that's impossible. Allah tawarak wa ta'ala wants you to raise his hands to him. Allah wants you to show that you're desperate, that you're in need. Raise your hands to Allah so that Allah can grant you what you desire. Because Allah says about the disbelievers in the Quran, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْعَذَابِ فَمَسْتَكَانُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ وَمَا يَتَضَرَّعُونَ وَلَقَدْ أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْعَذَابِ فَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ وَمَا يَتَضَرَّعُونَ Certainly Allah says we afflict them with punishments, with calamities, with difficulties, with hardships in this world. What's the objective? Allah says, فَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ They never showed Allah that they were in need. They never showed their neediness to Allah. وَمَا يَتَضَرَّعُونَ And they never supplicated and called upon Allah Azza wa Jal in Showing that they're desperate. 
Meaning that Allah is saying that's the objective of these tests. That we show that we're desperate, that we call upon Allah, that we raise our hands to Allah, that we ask Allah Azza wa Jal because Allah, when you ask Him, Allah promises that He'll grant you way out. Of course, when I mention this story, this does not mean that you just raise your hands to Allah and you call upon Allah Azza wa Jal and you ask Allah wa to cure you without actually taking any necessary steps to receive that cure. Because our deen, our religion teaches us that we must be people who do what it takes to attain what we are seeking. And part of that is going to receive treatment, going to doctors, seek, re receiving that treatment. All of that is part of relying upon Allah and calling upon Allah. These two matters do not contradict one another. That's part of our religion. Just like I call upon Allah and I have certainty that Allah will cure me, I receive treatment and I go through treatment and I take medication and all that stuff whilst believing that Allah will make this a means to cure me. That's the attitude of the believer. That's a personal experience that I've experienced. And one thing that I was always taught, it is that when you're making these du'as, Make it with certainty because Allah Ta'ala, when you call upon Him with certainty and you show that you believe 100% Allah will grant you what you request and what you ask for, Allah will give you it. Because if you don't have that certainty, that's disrespectful. If I promise you and I say to you as a human being, I'm going to grant you this and I'm going to give you this, I'll give you my word and you trust me 100%, you believe that I will never lie to you. You're going to have conviction and certainty that I'm going to fulfill my promise. Well, Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, Call upon me, I'll respond to you. Allah tells you in the Quran that he does not break his promise. So when I have doubts that Allah will respond to me, that is me being disrespectful, and due to that, I will not receive a response. May Allah make us from those who are, have conviction and certainty when they call upon Allah Azza wa Jal. إِنَّهُ وَلِذَانِكَ الْقَادِرَ عَلَيْهِ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ وَبَارَكَ عَلَى نَبِينَ مُحَمَّدٍ وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين